Hey guys, welcome to another lesson here. Uh, today we're going to build off talking about uh, chemical formulas or common elements and compounds. So we've already talked about the periodic table, its properties, how it's organized. We've talked about metals and nonmetals, how they are, uh, what their organization is and how they, what their properties are. Now we're going to go into actually naming some of these elements based on what their chemical formulas are and some of the compounds. So we got two screens going on here right now. We got the, on the left, you can see the periodic table and on the right, I'm going to do some drawings for you. So in the periodic table, it's all just the elements, all the elements that we have that are known to us within the world. And so what we're just going to take first is just look at how they actually get the names of some of these elements. And so if we first look at the element number one there, which is, oh, let's just get the pen activated, which is the, the H, the hydrogen. And that's probably hard to see, so let's maybe use a black. So, so hydrogen. Hydrogen is H, and for the most part of all elements, they are named by the first letter in their full name, or they're named by the first and possibly a second letter within their name, or they're named by possibly the their Latin name. So first off, we can see H is just simply hydrogen. Now, if we go by ones that have the second letter, we can look at CA. Now, CA is element number 20, and that is calcium. So again, we have one that's named just by the first letter, so hydrogen. We have one that's named by the first letter and the second letter within its name, calcium. And then if we look at another one, if we go all the way to element 82, which is PB. And this is lead, and you're probably thinking, how the heck do they get the initials PB from lead? Well, the Latin name for lead is plumbum. So, plumbum. And some of our elements, when they weren't sure how to name it based on maybe the letter P was already used, or the letter L was already used, like P is used in phosphorus, we have... Uh, lithium, which has an L in it, you know, they didn't want to create too much confusion, so they took the Latin name, and so again, the Latin name for lead is plumbum, so PB is lead. So, now, the next thing that we want to talk about is compounds, and something to remember, too, when we talked about the periodic table, we talked about how the periodic table is made up of pure substances. All the elements are pure substances. Well, so are compounds. Compounds are just elements put together and the specific ratio of the elements put together. And so the easiest one to look at, the most common one to look at, would be water. And water is H2O. So we know that hydrogen, the H is a symbol for hydrogen. We know that O is a symbol for oxygen. Now, we also know that, say, in this instance, we are dealing with, you know, water we drink, so liquid water. So we have an L there. Now, you will have some superscripts. You might have an S down in a superscript down here. You might have a G. You might have an L, or you might have an AQ. L is liquid. S is solid, G is gas, and A, Q is aqueous. Now, an aqueous solution is usually when you're dealing with an acid, but you have uh, solid probably being um, diluted into uh, liquid, so you're getting more of a kind of thicker, thicker base substance there. Now, the other thing you're probably wondering, what is this two? What does this two have to do with anything? Well, what that means in relation to water, each water molecule has two hydrogens compared to one oxygen. Now, you don't re write ones in a chemical formula because it's already, it's already given that you have one oxygen there. So what this says is I have two 
okay hydrogen molecules now what that'll look like what a hydrogen molecule look like is you have your oxygen so your oxygen atom there and then you have a bond here bond here and you have your hydrogen so oxygen hydrogen and hydrogen so this chemical formula formula tells you that for every atom of oxygen found in water there are two atoms of hydrogen it also tells you that water that it is water at room temperature so when we go back to this other page whatever description is given right here so being either a liquid a solid or a gas that's what its state is at room temperature so that's kind of just give you an idea of identifying some of the common elements and some of the simple compounds we're going to go through a little more here just to make sure we get it just to make sure that we have them it's a good idea to always know the first maybe the first 20 of the elements so if you can just follow the mouse over here if you see the mouse up above the title here periodic table of elements you can see number one is hydrogen for the most part a lot of the first few they are labeled by the first letter of their name or in relation to lithium the first letter and the second letter so back to the screen here li lithium now if we go through we can see h is hydrogen h e helium i mean you can't both they both can't have the H, so H hydrogen, H E helium. Okay, L I beryllium, B E, sorry, L I lithium, B E beryllium, B boron, C carbon, N nitrogen, O oxygen, F fluorine, N E neon, N A sodium, M G magnesium, A L aluminum, S I silicon, P phosphorus, S sulfur, C L chlorine. AR argon K potassium and CA calcium so that just gives you an idea of some of the naming now as you go through and work with them usually be, you're always going to be given a periodic table to work with so you will be able to look up what they are what the letters are you aren't expected to remember all of them but it just makes things easier if you do kind of remember a few of them especially if you know if they are metals and non-metals like we've previously talked about but now just to go back to naming some of the simple compounds if I, we already went through water now another one that you're probably quite familiar with would be sugar and sugar is known as glucose now glucose is made up of carbons, hydrogens, and oxygens, but in a specific set ratio. So, and we always know that glucose at room temperature is a solid. Now glucose is made up of six hydrogens, or sorry, six carbons, 12 hydrogens, and six oxygens. So that would be the chemical formula for glucose. Then we have some other ones, table salt. So table salt is sodium chloride. So if you're looking at the periodic table, all right, sodium chloride, what is that? And we know that, well, sodium is Na and chloride is Cl. So sodium chloride. So one big thing when you are writing out the names for compounds here, you always write the metals first. And in this case, we know that sodium is a metal. Chlorine is a non-metal. Now we're going to go through a couple other ideas here for naming some of these compounds too. But another one, we have carbon dioxide, something we breathe out. Trees take in and makes oxygen. So carbon, we know C and it says dioxide oxide meaning oxygen and if you look here so carbon dioxide now here's a key thing to give you di meaning that there is two so two oxides two oxygen so carbon dioxide so I hope that gives you a kind of idea of just naming some of the elements off the periodic table, how we name some of the common compounds. And we'll have another lesson on getting into more actually naming some of these compounds.